In this video, we're going to be talking about Lagrange multipliers. So you'll be using Lagrange multipliers on optimization problems where you're going to be looking for maximum or minimum values of an object function. And then there is this other um, addition to it where you have a restriction on your independent variables, x and y. They must lie on what's called a constraint curve. And your constraint curve is of the form g of xy equals to zero. So in order to talk about Lagrange multipliers, we first have to talk about this parallel gradients theorem, also known as the ballpark theorem. So to explain it, um, geometrically might be the best interpretation to start off with. Basically, if you have your um, constraint curve for your independent variables, it's this red line here. Think of it as the fence of the ballpark. So this is our curve, g of xy. And then we have some um, object function and in this case it's going to be the distance from home plate to the fence. So if you were walking along the fence then your con your object function would be the distance from home plate to the fence. So this is f of xy. Okay? And so at, as you walk along the fence at some instant you're going to be at the maximum distance from home plate. And so in that case it would be this line here and so there's a point P in which you meet this maximum distance. Okay, So you've maximized your function F. So at P, so at our point P, it has a property that, so we'll call it P, which is a point AB, it has a property that this line, L, we'll call it, um, points in the direction of maximum increase of our function F and it's also orthogonal to the fence at that point. So if you look at this blue line as a tangent line to the fence at that point, notice that the line L is orthogonal to that point, or to that um, line, the fence at that point. So that's a geometric interpretation of our ballpark theorem. And what this actually leads to mathematically is that we have the gradient of our function at a point is actually equal to a multiple of the gradient of our curve at that point. And so this scalar multiple here, this is what we call the Lagrange multiplier. So lambda is used to denote the Lagrange multiplier. All right, so in order to locate maximum and minimum values of our object function, which is subject to the constraint function, um, we have to do the following. So step one would be to find x and y such that the x and y's satisfy these equations, that the gradient of our function is equal to a multiple of our um, constraint function, and then the x and y also have to satisfy the constraint function. Once we've found those values of x and y, then after we evaluate our function at those values for x and y, we select the largest and the smallest function values, and then those would be our maximum and minimum values. Okay, so let's take a look at an example here. We have our object function f of x, y, and we have our constraint function also. So we need to find x and y that satisfy the following conditions. The first thing we want to do is find the gradient of f. So when we do this, we have the partial derivative with respect to x is 3, the partial derivative with respect to y is also 3. Then the gradient of g, our constraint function, is going to be the partial derivative with respect to x, which gives us 18x minus 9y. And then the partial derivative with respect to y is going to be negative 9x plus 18y. Okay. Now we need um, the, a multiple of our gradient with res of g to equal our gradient of f. So what that implies is that the partial derivative of f with respect to x is a multiple of the partial derivative of g with respect to x. Same thing with our partial derivatives with respect to y. So we'll break this into the components and what we end up with is that 3, and this is going to be our first equation, 3 is equal to lambda times 18x minus 9y. Our second equation will be that 3, this 3, equals lambda times negative 9x plus 18y. And then our third equation that our x and y have to satisfy is our constraint equation, which equals 0. So all we're going to do is subtract 16. So we have 9x squared minus 9xy plus 9y squared minus 16 equals 0. 
So we're going to have to solve this system of equations. Now to solve our system of equations here, I'm going to start with equations 1 and 2, and I'm just going to add them. Um, we'll actually technically subtract, so negative 1 times equation 2, and then we'll add. So if we say negative 1 times equation 2 and we add these, this is going to turn into positive 9, negative 18y, and negative 3 over lambda. So I just solved um, equations 1 and 2. I brought the lambda to the other side of the equation. Now when we add straight down, we get 27x minus 27y equals 0. If we factor out the 27 we have x and divide by it, we have x minus y equals 0, giving us that x equals y. Okay. So now that we have the x equals y, and we plug it back into either one of our equations, let's go ahead and just plug it back into equation 1, we have 18x minus 9x, because x and y are equal, equals 3 over lambda. So we have 9x equals 3 over lambda. And then we want to just simplify, divide by 9, and we get x equals 3 over 9 times lambda. So x equals 1 over 3 times lambda. All right now, because x and y are equal, this is also y. So y equals 1 over 3 times lambda. All right, so now that we have um, x and y are both multiples of lambda, and we didn't actually get numerical values for x and y, we have to plug into our third equation to get numerical values for x and y. So I'm just going to go ahead and use the fact <coughs> that x equals y and plug in um, every x, every y I'm going to plug in an x. So this is going to be minus 9x times x plus 9 times x squared minus 16 equals 0. So we have 9x squared minus 9x squared plus 9x squared. I'm going to go ahead and move that 16 over. So we have 9x squared total equals 16. So x squared equals 16 over 9. Take the square root. So we have x equals plus and negative minus square root of 16 over 9. So x equals plus and minus 4 thirds. Okay. Now because x and y are equal, we have the following ordered pairs. We have x equal to 4 thirds and y equal to 4 thirds. And then we also have x equal to negative 4 thirds and y equal to negative 4 thirds. So from here, we have to take these ordered pairs, our x's and y's, plug them back into our original object function and see which values give us a maximum or minimum. Now that we found our x and y values that correspond to our constraint equations and our um, equation with our Lagrange multiplier, we just plug these back into our function and see which one's the largest and which one's the smallest value. So if you plug in 4 thirds, you're just going to get 3 times 4 thirds plus 3 times 4 thirds giving us a grand total of 8. And similarly, if you plug in negative 4 thirds, negative 4 thirds, you're going to get negative 8. So from here, you just say, well, this is the largest of our output values, our function values. So this is our local maximum, or maximum of our value of our function. And this is the minimum value of our um, object function. The last thing to mention here is if your function, your object function is a function of three variables. So it's the same idea that we've already looked at, just extending it into three variables. So you have your gradient of your function, um, and this is in terms of x, y, and z, and that has to be equal to a multiple of your constraint function, which is also a function of x, y, and z. And then you have the constraint function needing to equal zero is also one of your um, equations.